overall scope of this addition here is going to be to remove this glass sunroom. And this is going to become an extension of the dining room, which is on that side, and the kitchen, which is on this side. The other part of the construction that you're seeing behind me is going to become the master bedroom and bath area. So right now what we're doing here, look at the foundation for this project here in Rocky Hill. It's crawl space foundation, so the first thing that we're doing is just taking down about 42 inches, just deep enough for the footers to be below the cross line. And once we get this all dug out, we'll get you back to the next stage of the project, which is be pouring the footers in the wall. So right now we're standing in the kitchen, and what we're going to do here is we're going to remove the entire wall from that point in the corner all the way down into the dining room, which is this way. All right, so as you can see, we're in the dining room now, and this is the other part of the wall that we're going to take out right up to this corner here. Now, one of the biggest problems with this here, or I should say obstacles that we're going to have to overcome, is that we're going to need to header off this entire ceiling, which has a span of about 20 feet. Now, once we actually take this apart and we get up into the ceiling and we see how it's constructed, we'll have a better idea of the types of materials that we can use. The overall goal here is going to be to eliminate any columns running through the center of the open. So right now we're standing in one of the bedrooms, which is currently being used as an office. But when this project is complete, this office is going to become the new master bathroom. And the activity that you see behind me, again, is the excavation. And after this wall is where we're going to blow out the new addition, which will be the master suite. Now what we're going to do here, basically, is we're going to keep this part of the wall, which is going to be used for a bathroom, Right about this area here, we're going to create the walkway or the hallway into the new addition. So what you're looking at here is the excavated area where our addition is going to go. Now these forms all around the perimeter here are where the footers are going to be poured. Now if you see here, on this addition that was poured probably 10 years ago or so, it's very similar to what we're going to be doing today. The first step of pouring is going to be just the footers in here, and it's similar to this. Now once these footers are completely dried and cured, the forms are going to come off, and then the next step is going to be to pour the foundation walls, which is something like this, and that's going to sit on top of the footers, and it's going to also follow the perimeter. Now once all the perimeter footers get poured, the next footers that we're going to pour are these center footers in the middle of the addition. These are going to support some lolly columns that are going to hold the main carrying beam from this end all the way to the house. Now on top of this main carrying beam, we're going to rest our floor joists that are running across at a 20 foot span. Now the next thing to note here is the depth of the footers. In the northeast, the code states that you have to be at least 42 inches deep below grade. Grade means basically right where the grass is. And the reason for that is, is so the frost doesn't go any deeper than 42 inches and it's not going to push the addition up during the season when the ground freezes. So the concrete truck is here. In the next couple of minutes we're going to start pouring the footers. Alright, so right now we're starting to pour the concrete for the footers. The concrete mix that we're using is a 3000 TSI high strength concrete mix. The reason we're using such a high strength mix it's because the weight of the whole addition relies on the footers. Alright, so today's a busy day here at Fizzy Editions on the project site. And what we're doing, the first step here, you can see Tony in the corner over there, he's drilling holes into the side of that foundation. What he's going to be doing is he's going to be ramming rebar in there and they're going to be pinned. So when we pour the new foundation wall, it's going to have some kind of a mechanical connection to the existing foundation and the new foundation using a pin. So we're looking at the basement window right now. And you can see the markings. That's where we're going to be putting a cut. The reason for the cut is so we have a walkthrough from the old basement to the new foundation. The new foundation is only going to be a three foot crawl space. So we need to cut an opening so we have access to run all our utilities into the new basement. Okay, so we have a form set up on top of the concrete footers, and we're about ready to start pouring the concrete. If you notice, everything is squared, and we've got some strings here to make sure that everything is perfectly square, level, and plumb. So as you can tell, 
down here, as we were talking about before, these are the pins that are anchored into the existing foundation that are going to give a good mechanical fast fastening to the new concrete wall. All right. So this red line right here represents the height of our foundation wall. Something that Tony's going to use as a guide for himself throughout the rest of this pouring. All right, so we're here today, and we poured our concrete walls, and we've already stripped the forms. So now we got a nice fresh concrete wall, and what we have here are the anchor bolts. These are going to be used to top plates, and it's basically, essentially what it's going to do is keep the entire structure from blowing away. It's going to give a good mechanical fastening walls to the concrete. So now I'm standing inside the crawl space foundation, and today we're going to be pouring the floors. Right now what Tony's doing over here is using the laser level so he can make sure that when he pours the floor it's nice and level. We use these red chalk lines guide when he's pouring so we make sure that the floor is consistently level all around the walls. 